Uh, my name is Aaron Lang. I'm a licensed sports massage therapist and mountain athlete living in Boulder, Colorado. Jumping right to it. So what uh, what got you into massage? Uh, yeah, so it's kind of a long process, but uh, right out of high school, I thought I wanted to be an engineer, just how my brain kind of worked with um, how things function and learned that I wanted to work with people. Uh, I didn't want to just work on a computer. So over years as a professional ski instructor, um, I learned kind of how the body moves and eventually met my wife, Bria, professional runner. And I was pretty instantly intrigued at uh, how the body works and how it adapts to the different stress she puts on it. And just kind of wanted to learn everything I could, how to help her, keep her healthy. Uh, she was going through, uh, undiagnosed at the time, she had, it's called Haglund's, uh, syndrome so little bone spurs on the back of the heel they dig into the Achilles tendon and so everyone just told her she had tendonitis in her Achilles and um, I pretty much did everything I could for four or five years and eventually learned that she had to have those bone spurs removed or else it would just keep happening but that actually kind of drove me through this cycle of every time it would flare up I would just like dive straight in and try to like learn everything I could to help her, um, which actually ended up teaching me a lot, yeah. which is really cool. It's part of why I was yeah. super interested to talk to you because she's come back from such a significant injury and everything you've learned through massage and how she's been pr performing lately. Like for you in massage therapy, what have you learned so far? Like what are the benefits? Yeah, I mean a huge part of it I think has to do with the nervous system. So when we're running, we're creating this huge sympathetic nervous response, you know, fight or flight, rest and digest kind of thing. There's two different sides to it. So when we're running, we're in that fight or flight system. And uh, I think massage really helps you calm down and get you into that like rest and digest. You know, uh, the other thing is feed and breed. <laughs> um, so it just kind of sets the body into the system of healing and adaptation, which is where you really get, you know, most of the benefit of your training. The other thing is this fine balance between uh, your muscular and tendinous systems. Um, so your tendons connect muscles to your bones. And for an efficient runner, you wanna have stiff tendons and strong muscles because your muscles need to be able to handle the tension of the tendons and your tendons need to be stiff enough to give you that elastic uh, return so that you're really efficient in like pushing off the ground. Where you come into a little bit of a problem is as you train your tendons become stiffer and if you don't focus on the compliance and strength of your muscles you can get uh, tendon or muscle like injuries. So that's a lot of like, overuse injuries you hear about. So through just understanding the way that muscles move and slide along past each other and the way they're wrapped, I've just slowly learned how to make these systems stay in balance with each other. So clearly, uh, seeing the benefits there, massage, what, what about frequency? Have you noticed anything about that? Like how yeah, often per um, week? I like to treat massage like um, it is an added stress to your body. So um, a lot of times I, I recommend treating it just like a strength training program. Um, you know, a lot of people like to add strength in on their workout days, kind of get the bulk of that stress in on one day and then have a day to adapt and recover. Um, so I do work with some athletes twice a week on their workout days, sometimes it's one workout day, one post long run day. Um, these are obviously very high level athletes and they have the funds and the means and the desire to, to do that. For a lot of people that can't, there's tons of ways you can kind of bridge the gap between sessions, doing all sorts of self care, like, you know, self massage, um, rolling out, lacrosse ball, compression boots. There's all kinds of new tools you can buy for kind of working the fascia, like scraping. And other than that, I would say like once a month, I like to just check in with people. 
because there's there's really not a good way other than having someone else get their hands on you that constantly knows your body and can see um, kind of how it's changing and adapting and, and starting to either get stressed in different ways, get imbalances, and how you're reacting to that, both like my own feel and then what you're telling me kind of hurts and knowing how the body works and compensates in like different ways. So. so when you see someone, how do you start that process? Yeah, so I always start with the uh, subjective. I like to just ask people what they're feeling, how the body feels. Um, I like to kind of, um, if, I, if they're a normal client, they're even like thinking about it during their runs, they're like, oh, I'm gonna see Aaron in the next few days. I'm gonna like think about during this run, like, oh, like, my hip feels a little tight on this side when I do this certain movement or certain things like that um, that they're able to tell me. This gives me little clues. My brain kind of starts, gears start going and then um, I'll visually kind of be looking at them at the same time. Like as they show me things, they might, um, they might like kind of move their hips in a weird way or be standing on one leg or they might be really like hunched in the shoulders or different things like that that I can um, kind of just take note of myself and then where the real work starts is getting my hands just um, on the muscles feeling how things compare to you know working with thousands of athletes over the last several years I've just developed kind of an understanding of especially for runners like how things should feel um, I understand also that <clears throat> everyone's different and the body adapts and you don't want to create too much change in someone's body, uh, especially if they're functioning at a pretty high level. You touched on it a little bit earlier. I'm curious for, for those that maybe can't afford to get a massage yeah. that many times during the week, like what self therapy or manual therapy can they do on themselves or products that you suggest that they use? Yeah, I mean, uh, one of my favorite products um kind of a shameless plug for roll recovery <laughs> yeah uh yeah i mean the r8 is still one of my favorite products as far as uh, it's easy to do post run when i'm like beat up tired and i don't want to have to like hold up my whole body weight foam rolling um i can get into a lot of different places because it like approaches from both sides same um, frequencies yeah, oh yeah, exact, yeah. exact same. Actually right now, one of my favorite personal routines post run, especially after a long run, um, I pretty much scrape um, up toward my heart. So going with the flow of the blood in the veins, right, up toward the heart. I'm kind of just scrape through, starting down low, all through my calf, front of the shin, uh, into my quads, adductors, and hamstrings and then I'll hop in our like compression boots. And I just found that, I don't know if it's just the kind of analgesic properties of kind of like lessening some of the, the pain from you know the intense like training or the duration. Uh, I've been doing long runs that are three hours or more for a while, doing, getting ready for like ultras and stuff. So, so for anyone and they said the new to running, just getting out the door, they're sore all the time. They're finding a way to recover, feel better between runs. What kind of key points or takeaways do you have for them? Yeah, um, I think uh, the thing to just always keep in mind is let your body do its its job and just try to think about how you can focus on adapting to the stress rather than just recovering from the stress. So what, the way you can do that is Listen to your body, um, take note of it, notice things that might be changing, notice things that might increase in intensity. You know, as you're testing your body's limits, feel free to like test, you know, don't stop it there. Like test how well you can recover too and just find a good person that you can talk to as well. Lots of PTs, sports medicine physicians, massage therapists. They all understand how these things work and they'll have all sorts of exercises and tools. Yeah, so just keeping those in balance and knowing um, how you can keep all that connective tissue healthy while it's trying to adapt in these different ways.